up, folks? We're back at the Sean Walker Show here, from Allen University basketball here with my man Sean Walker. Got to see him in the ATL this weekend when they played Morehouse and Clark this weekend here in the ATL. We'll recap that as well for you. But, brother Sean, how you doing after that, that road trip last night, man, getting back to Columbia, man? Uh, doing good. We're glad to be off the road. Got home last night about 3.30, 3, 3.15, 3.30 in the morning. By the time I got home, it was out to 4.00. So we're happy to be home, man. Got up this morning and shook, shook it off and came in here to talk to you a little bit and, um, you know, get ready for the weekend. No doubt, man. I'm asking now. I know you came to the Hawks game, man. So let's get your fans a coach, man. What are your thoughts about watching the Hawks, man, on playing fire like it's Indiana, man, and just, just kind of seeing what, what the NBA game a little bit there this past weekend? Yeah, well, when I go to games like that, I go for entertainment. You know, it's, right. uh, when, you, when, you, when you take a look at that level of basketball, the size of those players, or the agility of those players, and just the overall skill. Um, you know, I sit there in amazement. So when they got with popcorn my, my, and my um, unlimited amount of uh, uh, a drink there, uh, Sprite, uh, they call it bottomless there in the, in the arena. Yes. And, uh, had, had, a, had a good time just, just enjoying and watching the game, uh, which I don't get a chance to do much. No doubt, man. And the Hawks game experience is a little bit different than most teams around the NBA, man. Like, every time out, there's something going on. There's no time out. We just chill it. Right. It's always the, the music or some kind of contest, kind of shot. So, I will say our, our PR department, entertainment department, does a great job game presentation mode and making sure fans are engaged the whole game, win or lose. Yeah, well, it was definitely a, um, it's, it's definitely a family-like atmosphere there. And very fun, very, very fun to be in attendance. No doubt. And Sean, I know bring you on a business trip, road trip. I know a game in Morehouse, it kind of what we've talked about in the past, man, like those close games, man, where you you guys are in there, but when the momentum goes away, it's kind of like, you know, they kind of, you know, kind of man down to it. We don't like that. But trying to learn from these mistakes, when we get getting more and more house of gaming, we're very vulnerable. But talk about that game in particular, how, how you're trying to use that game, watch the film, get the guys to kind of see that, hey, if we execute in the clutch and throughout the game and then and then we can get over the hump of these close games here. Yeah, well, you know, we have we've had uh each of the games that we've played in after the after the first weekend before last night, uh we've we've had a commanding lead. We've 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 had a lead anyway. When we were right there in the game that against Morehouse we were up eleven in the first half. I went in halftime up five. Um, and so we have a, just a difficult time um, just continue to grind the execution. Now, some of that um, certainly is about the other, the other team. Um, you know, we, we, we don't operate the greatest when teams start surging at us. Um, you know, where we can be, get ourselves in a comfortable situation and we can really execute in the games at a moderate pace, uh, we can do some damage. As fast as the game gets for us, we're not quite as good. Um, so we had an opportunity to, to 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 win a game at Morehouse. Morehouse is seven and one in this league, um, one of the top three teams in the league for sure. At their place, um, we played solid ball. We shot sixteen percent from the field in the second half, five for thirty. Um, we missed we missed about ten uncontested layups in that game. We we certainly missed six uncontested and probably another four or five that. That, that good college basketball players should make. Uh, so, uh, you know, it was one of those games that we left on the table, I felt. Lost the game by two points. Had a chance to tie it at the, at the, at the buzzer. Um, but we didn't quit. Uh, we played we played tough, and we led that game for most of the game. Uh, we're just unable to finish. So, um, to beat good teams, um, beat teams that are probably a little bit more talented and bigger and stronger than we are, yeah, you have to play mistake-free basketball throughout the game, and we have a hard time doing that. Um Unfortunately, we have a hard time doing it after we get after we get a lead. So, uh, um, something that we're working on on a day to day basis, and uh, hopefully we can continue. You know, and Sean, I feel like this man for for your guys, man, uh, value in that basketball, man. It's not throwing the ball away. I feel like sometimes you guys get, get reckless. Sometimes I watch watch it back on, on live streams and things of that nature. It's like we got to get to a point where we're not getting rushed in our heads and start thinking too quickly and just make the right basketball play, the right read, and just keep that execution. It's not get panic mode, you know, in the high, all the little small things, free throw blockouts, rebounding, 
50 balls, hustle plays, getting the rebound, finish play with a rebound, and getting out and go. All those small things are points that you that you can prevent and make more for you. So if 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 you do get tight, you have the cushion to withstand the run and reset yourself and refocus and finish the game out the right way. Well, I've seen to our guys that you know we have to play a certain way. All right. We we have to we have to capitalize <clears throat> on opposing teams' errors. And then we have to minimize our errors so we, they're not capitalized on. Um, and that's the same for every team. I guess that's cliche. But for 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 a team like ours, it's, it's, it's major. And when the game gets to be too fast or the game gets to be out of control for our liking, we're definitely at our worst, all right? Um, we're going to turn the ball over. So we have a couple of pivotal areas of concern. Um one uh, uh, untimely turnovers, uh, and they normally happen, um, obviously through bad decision making. But those decision makings are, are worse when we're in a ra- when, when a rapid pace. All right. Two, how we finish a possession once we get a stop. Last night in the first half, we just couldn't get a stop. In the second half, we got stops, and then we threw the ball to the other team. So, and and then our turnovers go to layups. So um, those 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 things we, you know, they're they're difficult to work on because we don't want to practice playing at a speed that we can't play, so that we can practice not throwing the ball away at that speed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so you know, it's it's a funny, it's a kind of a funny uh, dynamic. Uh, we've got to work really hard at managing the game better, um, and and, and you no, know, you know it's tough. We, we we kind of play with one ball handler, all right. We play well, G. Sean Aldridge or, or M. J. Ray, normally primarily handle the ball when people press us and attack us. Um, we we don't necessarily have playmaking people on the wings, so we need to get the ball down the floor so those persons, Austin James and and, and Malik Lacewell, can make plays shooting the ball, one or two dribbles. Um, and so that's our dynamic, and uh, we're pretty good at it when we get into it. And uh, when, we're, when, we're, when we're not into it, you know, it doesn't look, doesn't look very good. And, like, you got good stuff you run. <clears throat> Once you can get in your stuff, it's good stuff. You have, and the guys can get to the point where they trust the stuff, you know. Just, just make the right play. If you if you swing it one more time and swing it again, you might have an easy shot where you big guys. You know, throw up to him and he catch the ball turn and do something with it. So it's like – it's like they happen to the point where they understand, like, hey, if we just kind of don't let the game play us, we play the game, and then get right. into our stuff, right. get opportunities to do some things and then set our defense. Obviously, you can't – when when it's set, you can get some stops. Transition-wise, right. it's kind of crazy, but when you can set it, get the right things and make sure you're doing the right thing defensively, whether it be zone or the man, you definitely get some, some stops and get the opportunity to build off those things and get those kills. Well, the 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 thing for us is is that we can be very difficult to guard. We have to assure that we are taking the right shots, that we are looking for the right shot, because that's also a part of how we begin to play too fast. A bad shot, a shot out of balance, puts you in transition defense. There's a direct correlation between shot discipline and, and transition defense. Um, that hurts us. It's a direct correlation between being out of balance on offense and transition defense. So you turn it over and you're out of balance. You, you, you have a big, you have a big problem. So uh, those are things that we have to, to, to improve on, but they're not things that we do for 40 minutes. They're things that we do for two or three minutes and those two or three minutes put us in a deficit that at the end of the game we, we have a difficult time overcoming. Yeah, it's like stacking that thing, man. And that's I think as young kids, man, they don't sometimes they don't understand like the, the the process of stacking good things and good things. And then when when something bad happens, let's not let that overcome us. And I right. think that's something that young kids struggle with as well. Heck, I see it on the NBA level still. So 
And like you travel for, I was talking about before the game started, young kids becoming young adults in the NBA and those same habits are still there. And it's like, yeah, it gets a point in your mind where you can overcome um, mistakes. Like nobody's perfect. We all got flaws. We all gonna make mistakes. But in a game, understand, hey, let's get fix, take the coaching, accept the coaching, and kind of make the corrections and don't get pissy if your coach gets into into you about doing something that you messed up on because those are gonna make you the team better when we're clutching of a team. It's not a team that got world beaters on it. So we have to really just come together as one and I'll be on the same point going forward. Well our 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 objective, particularly with the team that we have in this first year of building this program is connectivity. All right, we're we're not a connected banded together group. We're, we're going to have a difficult time being successful. So it's part of my message last night after the game. We've lost four games right now in a row. 2024 so far has not been uh, the greatest to us, um, but we have certainly had an opportunity to win. We've certainly played some good basketball here or there. The stakes are raised. All right, you played Morehouse one night. They're seven and one in the league. You go back the next day. You play Clark. Clark. Clark's coming off a major win. They just beat Benedict, who is number nine in the country. Benedict was undefeated before Clark beat them. <clears throat> that's a tough. That's a tough weekend uh, for for uh, a program that's trying to climb the ladder. Uh, so you know, I don't think that uh, we played awful. I don't think that we went out there and never had a chance to win. I think that we're competing. I think we're playing hard. And that's a testament to the young to the young men that I have in the locker room. Um, for the most part, they are coachable. Uh, at the end of the day, like, you know, nobody likes to hear that they don't do something well. But it's just the sooner that you can accept the fact that this is what I do. This is what I do really well. And this is what I should stay away from so that I can be more successful doing what I do well. Then you can become a good team. It's OK if you don't shoot the ball great. But this guy does. So you drive it and he, he shoots it. You guys are a team. You're banded together. Um, so that's the, that's what Coach Walker and my staff, that's what we're trying to do for these guys, to let them know that um, stay away from the things that you're weak at. Do more of the things that you're strong at. If you do that, then we together can be a team that's a force to reckon with. We're not going to out-talent people, all right? There's – there's, there's gonna, we're not going to be the most talented team on the floor every night, and there's nothing wrong with that. But we can be smarter than the other team. We can play harder than the other team. We can do it for longer than the other team. Gives you a chance to win. No doubt. It reminds me, uh, I don't know if you remember this back in the day. Remember that Magic team that before they got trying to get McGrady and Duncan and all those guys, they were 41-41, but guys who were just like, like you said, they weren't the most talented team, but they won. They were 500 pretty much a team that was there to tank, but went 500. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And like, people thought the Texans were not going to be good in football this year because of the roster, but they just stuck to a plan. And so there are examples of just doing things the right way and just playing and executing and testing the details, and we can get the win. And what's good about your team is, I know the, the result's not what you all wanted, but if you can, they can just put in their mind, hey, we got up on these teams that we didn't close it out, but we so we have something here. We do it the right way to cause people trouble and and do the right things. That's key. We can win these games. We work at a point of winning. You know, we didn't close it out, but obviously we did something correctly to get up right. these points. And so that's the way I think I take from the positive from it and just say, hey, we can do this. We do this, replicate this. What we do and the right we can get something done. That's well, last, last game. So. With the good part about the fact is that our players do believe that they can win. All right. We're not a defeated locker room. We are not um in a in a in a mix of thinking that we just need to show up for the game to get beat. Also, the culture of this program is, I mean, let's we have to be completely honest. As I went through the locker room last night and said, <clears throat> you know. We, we, we have one guy in that locker room that transferred here that didn't win a game last year at all, all right? He only won two games prior to getting here, all right? He was a sophomore. They were 0-26 in, in last year and they won two games the year before. Obviously, the, 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 the young man that returned here won four games a year ago and won six games the year prior to that if they were here two years. 
So we're trying to change this, this, this mindset of, you know, not so much change the mindset because they want to win. And obviously they wanted to win before they, before they came here and before they played for me. It's not me. I'm trying to say, but we need to change how we approach winning. All right. What does winning take? <clears throat> what are you doing in practice to promote winning? <clears throat> Excuse me. What are you doing in practice to get better? What do you do outside of practice? Are you actually working on the things that I'm asking you to do? Not going in the gym, throwing the ball up from out of bounds or from half court, but are you actually working on shot faking and um, um, rebounding or going to the to the to the ball with two hands? Are you catching the ball with two hands? Are you are you taking game speed shots? Um, this is these are the things that we have to overcome. You know, you were in the locker room last night at the end of the game. I got here this morning to do the show. You know, I told you we got here at, at four o'clock in the morning. I walked in today. I got a player in the gym and they're shooting right now. All right. So that's a good sign to the message that we gave last night because everybody got off the bus at the same time and everybody got here late. And there's one guy that didn't sleep in this morning. He did go to class and then after he went to class, he walked into the gym. So we're headed in the right direction. You know, you know Rome wasn't built in a day. We're looking forward to uh, continue this race because um, it is a marathon. It's not a 40 yard dash. And as you say, you're moving the cheese day by day. That's it. Moving the cheese day by day. That's it. <laughs> you're moving the cheese day by day. Yeah, you're doing that. And you got a big weekend this week coming up at home. Finally, finally coming back home. Finally. You all been good at home. So you got, uh, you know, two friends of mine, Montez and Coach Gill, coming coming in there from Fort Valley and Albany State. Uh, what if those guys on film was you all prepared for, for this, this weekend at home, a big weekend for you guys? This is a great big weekend. Um uh, we, we've, we've got to get this monkey off our back, so to speak. Um, and I mean, we, we, this is, we're in a pivotal moment of the season. Um, you know, we've played it. We played at the very, very, very top of the league. Um, so to speak, we've got Fort Valley and Albany, Albany coming there. Both teams that are very formidable opponents, very good teams, just like us trying to fight in, in the trenches. Um, and then we leave there and, Got to go across the street to Benedict, you know, after that game and then go get on the road again. So, um, you know, it doesn't get any easier. And as I say to our players, nobody's feeling sorry for us right now. We don't, we're we not going to feel sorry for ourselves either. We're going to go in here and fight it, scratch, uh, 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 scratch and claw. Uh, this is a hard hat program. It's built on uh, hard hatness. Uh, and so what we're looking forward to doing is, getting our first win in 2024, getting our eighth win of the season, um, trying to stay status quo, staying positive, staying connected, um, continue to get better. I think we're the team in the league that has the most growth to be able to, to, to do at this point in the year. And that's a bonus. Like, that's exciting, right? It's not like we've reached our peak, all right? We can stop turning the ball over. We, we can stop giving up offensive rebounds. We can start not giving up the middle drive. We can get back in trend. We can take better shots, all right? And so that 10-toe buy-in is there and that 10-finger buy-in is there moving forward. Now, what I don't believe is anybody wants to play us, all right? I don't believe that people see Allen on the schedule and say, okay, that's a win, all right? I don't think people see that. And so that makes me feel good at the same time. I mean, it's no more victories. We got we we got to figure out how to how to be up at the end of the clock. And every game is going to be close for us, so it doesn't doesn't make a difference. We're going to play close games. Um, last night's the first night that we got beat handily um, this season, and uh, so we have to figure out how to not, try not to let that happen again. Um, and, and it'll be tough because we got some some great opponents coming up. And last one I got, man. I'm looking at the SIAC East. It's a gauntlet, man. It's it's crazy. The SIAC East is crazy. You know, the, the, the up and down, up and down. Because, man, that's a gauntlet. It's a lot of talent in the league, and the games are going to be close. And it come down, like you said, execution. And it's beautiful that you can still get better because everything you named is something that's correctable. No you question. Know, it's not like it's not correctable. If it was something different, but like you said, man, the things you can improve on are things that you can actually – you know, it's great to have that opportunity to grow. And growth is linear sometimes. Guys, when he says, you go up here, no, it's kind of 
incremental growth in this, and it makes a difference as you go through this this great journey you all on this rest of this twenty twenty one twenty one season. Yeah, man. So, so listen, Benedict's on our side of the league. They're nine in the country. Morehouse right now is eight and one in the league. All right, Clark Atlanta is now eleven and three with a Division One win versus Mercer University early in the year. They just beat Benedict. All right. Those three teams are are really good teams. Really good teams. Um, listen, Miles is Miles. They they're on the other side. We haven't seen them yet, but uh, obviously, Fred Watson is legendary in this league and seems to be around the championship every single year. All right, uh, you know he's he's kind of leading the group on that side. We've already played Lane and Morehouse that are great. I mean Lane and and, and Lamar on that are that are really good teams. Um, so, you know, not that every team is good because like we lost to Tuskegee in overtime. At that time, they were two and ten, and they may have the best post player in the league. All right, Spring Hill plays a little bit more methodical like we do. Um, Spring Hill's got arguably the best catch and shoot guy in the league, averaging 20 shooting threes. And then they had a, their point guard had 30 points against us. The, the shooter had 20 and the point guard had 30, you know, out of their, out of their 80 points. So there's great players. At, it, it, there's great coaching. There's great players. Um, we got to figure out where we fit in this equation. So, um, you know, we're getting started here in this program, trying to get this cheese moved. Um, what we need to know is, that we, yeah, we got to move the cheese, but we also need to move with the cheese. That's where we are right now in our in our in our, in our journey. We we are, the cheese stops and goes, and it's going in a direction that we don't necessarily want it to go. We got to move with it and get it back on the right track. And uh, I'm confident that we're going to do that because we're going to continue to work at it until the, to the last horn sounds. And I'm confident in you too, my good brother. Like I said, it's good to see you last night. Good to spend some time with you and your team, man, and some events with you guys, man. It was fun, man. I enjoyed it. About I told you I was tired, but I still said I'm gonna come support you. Man. I appreciate you coming, man. Appreciate you. I appreciate your words with our guys, and they enjoyed uh, hearing from you. And uh, hopefully, we'll be able to do it again soon. We'll be back in your area in a few weeks at Fort Valley and Albany, and it's a little distance away from you, but uh, you never know. You might be get a chance to catch another game. Hey, if we are, if we have an off day, I'm coming, brother. You know, if we have an off day, I'm coming. You already know that. I got you, brother. I appreciate you. Anytime, bro. Good to see y'all. It's folks. The Sean Walker Show, man. One of the highest shows in the country, man. Doing big things. My man, Sean Walker. Hey, brother. I'll see you soon, my guy. No doubt about it. Appreciate you, soldier. All right.